Hey buddies, Potato McWhiskey here and welcome back to Victoria 3. Now we are still in the process of upgrading the naval side of our military and then we're going to start working on getting the land military up and running. We are officially a recognized great power. Uh, one big problem that we have right now in the game is that our infamy is a little bit high. So we kind of have to chill out for a little while. Um, we spent a lot of our infamy. So we're going to spend a little bit of time chilling out, making sure we're continuing to build up our economy. Our economy stalled. I don't want to say that it stopped. It just like that war that we were in, it kind of caused a little bit of an economic stall for us because it, our economy wasn't growing as fast as it should have been um, because we weren't able to invest as heavily into all the things that we need to. And um, one thing I would be, it would be kind of fun to be able to do is to maybe go up to steel frame buildings, at least in some of my construction sectors. We do have a couple of revolutions brewing. Okay, so the landowners and the peasants are a little bit angry. Why is that? So it looks like they are just really, really upset. And the problem that I have here is that they will take too many armies. Um, I currently have yeah 460 battalions and they would take uh, over a hundred of them so I'll have to wait before we do this yeah I don't think we're going to be able to pass this so we'll have to cancel uh, enacting laissez-faire but I guess that does potentially open us up to maybe considering other reforms like we could move out of monarchy here for example we could become a presidential republic oh this allows for anarchy in a workers collective interesting it'd be really fun to make like an anarchist anarchist style thing so this makes farmers and machinists really really powerful interesting council republic weirdly enough we have a lot of support for this inside my country the trade unions the armed forces like <laughs> wait what the hell why do people support this so much i guess people really just don't like monarchy i think our goal is to stay as a monarchy though um that kind of feels right for japan in this time period like it feels like the right way to play i kind of would like to go to total separation here this will hurt our authority even further but we are kind of like getting rid of all of our authority we eventually want to get rid of these uh, consumption taxes so i guess if i went for total separation this would upset the buddhist monks but they're marginalized anyway and this would further disenfranchise them so let's do total separation of church and state let's not religiously discriminate against anybody so we just researched Junicol so we can have higher level naval bases um, self-propelled torpedoes this could lead to submarines and torpedo boats do i want torpedoes they're quite good for convoy rating. I think that's more if you're looking to do, um, if you're fighting upwards, essentially. If you are the weaker naval power, you go for submarines. Otherwise, I think now we're going to switch over to the right side of the military tech tree and start getting things like hand-cranked machine gun. This is going to give us extra defense and extra kill rate, bolt-action rifles, automatic machine guns, war propaganda, all these things we want to grab. Um, in particular, I'd really like to get trench works, but I think I need to do a little bit of research before we can get there. The mass expansion of the logging industries is well underway. Um, socialist ideas are sweeping through Japan let's see here so we can guarantee fair wages oh this would allow us to have lot wage subsidies interesting it looks like an election result just came in the constitutional reform party definitely won out um so we could protect labor rights this would give us regulatory bodies so this would reduce work workplace conditions or we can pass laws protecting trade unions the intelligentsia will always select vanguardist communist or anarchist leaders other interest groups are more likely to select vanguard so do we want to go for a communism style play so the intelligentsia have just become a lot more socialist i want to have a look at this so what is this so we have poor laws and then wage subsidies that's 10 percent welfare payments lowered political strength when receiving welfare 50 percent welfare welfare is going to get expensive dude so old age pension would require social security with minus one percent workforce ratio 20 percent dependence two percent dependence enfranchisement so i have to pick one of these i can guarantee fair wages i can protect labor rights let's have a look at labor rights what do we have um regulatory bodies would lower dangerous working conditions Ooh, workers protections would bring in a minimum wage i think regulatory bodies is the right step forward for us here It'll protect our workers' rights uh, and increase our pop growth, which kind of serves my goals and my aims. I don't want to go full communism in, in this run. Maybe another run. Maybe as, uh, like, I don't know. I feel like I kind of want to follow at least, not like completely historical, but at least like a plausible history, you know, where we, we go in a general direction that Japan kind of went. Let's see, so armed forces promotion. Yeah, that's fine. So how's the war going, actually? Yeah, we conquered them. That's fine. So it looks like there is a push for socialism inside Japan right now that I don't have control over. Another native uprising has been launched. We're a target of a lot of these. To be fair, probably not without cause. So where is this? This is Kuba over here. Let's grab ourselves the army. We'll mobilize you. You're already mobilized. Go ahead and deal with that. So Manika has been annexed. That's perfect. There's a few split states down here. I'd love to conquer this radical old man, but they're kind of st stuck. Can I? Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I would have trouble 
conquering things but I almost have like I have most of the control of Zanj I'd love to take control of these Great Lake states because they have a huge amount of population which would be really really handy for me but we are getting massive migrations up to Sakhalin weirdly enough I wonder does it actually have much in the way of spare population it does um, we might, wa might want to consider um, increasing the productivity of this area so like let's have a look I might just do like a little bit of productivity across the board like increase everything here that'll hopefully increase the attractiveness I mean it has pretty good attractiveness mostly from colonial uh, attraction but if we can get rid of some more of these peasants by having a whole bunch of like open jobs maybe that'll be a good step forward for the people who live here I do like to see the price of wood coming down we're not importing any nor are we exporting any so we do need to try and keep that a little bit down if we can in fact I'm pretty sure I'm almost producing okay we're at war Cuba that's fine yeah I've almost maxed out like all the wood that I can possibly build which is good am I like one of the top producers of wood I wonder yeah I'm the number two producer in the world only China produces more than me but here's the crazy thing it's like all that wood that I'm producing I'm consuming it like we're using that wood <laughs> like in a weird weird turn of events fertilizer is still quite cheap let me have a look um yeah everywhere is using fertilizer Engines and explosives are quite expensive in my country. What is the current status of farming? I need to like figure out something that uses fertilizer. And honestly, probably the thing to do would be to go to nitrogen fixation. Um, because my chemical plants right now, they're not even using... Oh, I guess they are using improved fertilizers. Yeah, this would be lowered, but it'd be too much lower. What if I disabled a few of these? How much, how much fertilizer am I overproducing? Or maybe could I export fertilizer? Yeah, nobody wants it. It's the weird thing. So I tell you what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn off... No. Yeah, I'm going to turn off some fertilizer plants. Hang on. So you're going to do a normal fertilizer, normal. So I turned off a chunk of them. This is just to bring fertilizer down to a more normal price, which I think is, you know, something you want to be doing. One thing that's super expensive is the motor industry um, in my country. So I'm going to go ahead and build that up slightly. Coal is pretty expensive as well. So we'll try to bring the price of coal down. Do a massive expansion of industry. Cool, so we just did total separation of church and state, and my hope is that even though this hurts my authority, this will actually make my country more um, attractive for people to migrate to us. So we've fully taken over Cuba, we've taken over a bunch of stuff. Any more colonials we can do? No, we're colonizing to our heart's content, to the maximum level that we can, which is great. We're, we're grabbing all that land, all that really, really useful land. Interestingly, f the French owned French Sinai, maybe they're going for the Suez Canal. So conquering these guys is actually really, really cheap. It's only like a little, like a year or two worth of infamy. I don't know if that's necessarily what we want to do while our infamy is really, really high. We don't want to give people reasons to attack us, basically. One thing I am lacking is allies. So let's try and make friends with Great Britain. Um, and failing that, Perhaps we could make allies with, like, maybe Prussia or France or Austria or someone. Oh, what else can we do in here? We can't pass compulsory private school. The industrialists don't like that. We need to improve the relationship with the trade unions. Women in the workplace, we could get a better work birth ratio or a better workforce ratio. Women's suffrage could be another step forward for us as well, although that one's a little bit more opposed. I'm curious as to why the intelligentsia and the trade unions are opposing. Why do you oppose women in the workplace let me have a look you oppose legal guardianship and you endorse propertied women well, that doesn't make sense because in here when i go to my laws you oppose women in the workplace why why do you oppose women in the workplace it says here you're neutral towards it but for some reason you're opposing it is it because you're just upset and like reacting that doesn't make any sense i'm very confused by that and weirdly enough the industrialists are in has a feminist leader right now so they should be endorsing women joining the workplace god there's a lot of weird the political system gets weird <laughs> it gets very very weird uh industrialist international sentiment um so we could say class above nation i'd say these unpatriotic ideas will fade the socialists will be left by the wayside so i've got a little bit of spare bureaucracy could i upgrade something Workplace safety would lower dangerous working conditions. So this would completely eliminate all dangerous working conditions, but it would cost me some bureaucracy. Um, I think more education is good. I def definitely feel like we have managed to completely handle uh, the basic goods situation. Like we have like a super, super good handle on that. It's industrial goods and luxuries where I'm having a little bit of trouble. I could probably use a few more shipyards too. I've got a little bit of an iron car ironclad deficit. But yeah, this just feels like a, a constant battle to try and get control of these. Um, so that's army kill rate boosted with hand crank. Let's go for military statistics because um, these things are kind of expensive right now. So we need to bring the price down by researching everything in this tier. There's actually a huge population of immigrants over here in... Um, in Africa, like we have like a massive multicultural thing going. We've got Dixie, Ashkenazi, Maasai, Japanese, Luo. We've got like a multicultural Africa shaping up here. Even, even I think Sakhalin here 
is pretty multicultural, right? You've got Aboriginal, you've got Finnish people up here. 13% of the people who live in Hokkaido are Ukrainians, uh, believe it or not. Yeah, actually... Okay, there must be like some serious Ukrainian oppression going on in this game because like like six percent of my population is Ukrainian, I'm pretty sure. Like what the hell? <laughs> what is Russia doing? You need to calm down, Russia. Oh, it's two percent. Two percent of my population is Ukrainian. Um I guess that must be because Russia has if we check their politics, yeah, they have national supremacy, so like or maybe maybe the quality of life in Russia just sucks and people are like trying to get out of there. Yeah, I mean they're impoverished compared to mine, which is like I'm impoverished, but mine's like higher impoverished. Like I'm better impoverished. Whereas the UK is middling. Uh, Self-propelled torpedoes, that's perfect, which means we can finish military statistics. We could, in theory, if we wanted to, activate torpedo boats. This would hurt our defense, for sure, but it would give us a lot of offense and convoy rating efficiency. I would kind of like to go to monitors, but that would make these goods really, really expensive. You know what, let's do it. Let's go to monitors, and we'll just see how the price changes for these things. Uh, trade center throughput is quite nice. Yeah, ironclads are a little bit expensive right now. Let's get some shipyards. Uh, I have a deficit of... 250 ironclads, which means I need 10 ironclad factories. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There's constantly like little pop-ups here that are appearing that are just like, the UK is trying to damage relations with me. Interesting. Uh, but there's constantly little pop-ups that are like, hey, you've got uh, this thing. People are migrating to you. If the UK is looking to go to war with me, I should probably continue to build up my military. And I should also look into getting electricity up. I'm pretty sure this is a good that my people will use. The problem is that engines are really expensive right now. So if I go up from naval traditions to Jeune Nicole, uh, I will get slightly more offense, slightly more defense. I'll get morale damage, morale damage protection. Most importantly, I will actually uh, have more officers and I'll get a faster training rate. So my navies will train faster now when I build them. Every time I build new buildings in the South Island, we get like new people moving here because uh, the economy becomes more active let's say yeah i think new zealand is like the only place in my empire that i can make wine i'm pretty sure if i take a look yeah it's just like south island and then hokkaido and those are like the only two places i can make wine so i'm definitely going to specialize new zealand as a vineyard and like if as a byproduct they make grain great so let's max out the wheat farms here so we can get people moving there which should produce a really really useful luxury good which is wine hokkaido on the other hand um what's the population looking like here we actually have a decent amount of peasants that we could use. Let me see. If I were to do this in Hokkaido, I could build 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, plus another 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 wheat farms there. So we'll get those wheat farms going. This will increase the demand for fertilizer in my country too, which I'm quite happy with. So expanding my uh, wheat industries. Plus it'll lower the cost of grain, which will increase the quality of life of my people because one of their chief costs uh, in their in particular for the poor people, is grain. Uh, right now, clothing is quite expensive, furniture, groceries. Groceries are a little bit expensive, but you can make up for that with grain. Tea is super expensive, but I think I think clothing would be the biggest increase in quality of life for my people. How are my middle class? So they're paying a decent amount of money in taxes. Their most expensive thing is, is clothing and tea. So we definitely want to try to get more tea. Let's have a look at our tea market. Oh, there's tea. Oh yeah, yeah, tea is like the biggest thing in demand. Hold on, let me uh, get some tea plantations. We can make tea down here. And I think it would be good to start building up the economy in Africa with like some tea plantations. Let's just make some tea out here. So I don't know how many tea plantations I'm building. Let's have a look. Yeah, I've got 12 more tea plantations coming. Uh, there's aniline, which is unlocking these synthetics plants. So we have another way to get dye, although I have no problem getting dye. So that's not necessary for me. Um, so every tea plantation makes 20 tea and my current tea deficit is like a lot. So I think we're going to have to like build up a decent amount of extra tea. So I have a, a mass amount of tea plantations being founded in Africa. And I think there is something to be said for plantations. Like if you build them all in a uh, in a single state and you can like super specialize a particular state. My logic is if I spread them around a little bit, um, all of the states will get like better quality of life. They'll start to attract more people and a sort of rising tide lifts all ships at the same time. Plus you get like more spread out wage increases rather than concentrating all the wage increases into a single state, which should lead to a better overall increase in um, quality of life. Yeah, more like Brazilian people are migrating to Sakal and this place. People just love it over here, man. So I have a huge amount of surplus bureaucracy that I built. Um, now, the great thing about surplus bureaucracy is it gives you a little bit of construction efficiency. There's another 5% prestige from unlocking the film tech. I think we're going to go up to increase our education level. I would really like to increase um, my medical level. That would be really, really nice because then I could lower mortality. But there's military statistics. This will lower the mobilization goods requirement. I think this is um, mobilized to follow the general about. I think, does this actually just simply reduce the cost of goods for military buildings? Like, does this actually just, like, if I wait a month, 
Huh, no. Maybe this is like the cost when you're actually like getting a thing to get up and go. Because like it still consumes the same amount of ammunition and small arms. So maybe there's like some extra cost when you're like mobilizing or something. I don't know. Right, let's have a look at what our next step is. We could go for uh, trench works. This would lead to trench infantry. Trench infantry consume a lot more ammunition. They have an extra 10 offense though, which is really, really nice. I think we should go to the highest level infantry that we can. This will allow us to max out our power projection. It'll also unlock barbed wire fences for our ranches, which will lower the amount of workers they need. Why are you slightly expensive? Oh, I guess, is my, is the armed forces pissed off at me? No, they like me, so it's actually a cheaper tech than it should be. We are getting our maximum innovation, right? Yes, we are. Go for siege artillery. Yeah, let's go for trench infantry. I think that's like the most important thing to take up. It means you advance and advance slower. Um, but this is like the era of solidified frontline. So I'm okay with that. So country or class, inclusion of the armed forces in the Japanese government. I could lose authority. Yeah, you know what? Let's just make the trade unions mad. Let me have a look. Do I need to reshuffle my government, by the way? No, I think I'm relatively happy with this government. It's a combination of liberal reformers and the old guard. Nobody cares about elected bureaucrats. That's like chiefly a petty bourgeoisie thing. It might be good to get some home affairs. Um, secret police or something like that. So this gives me conscription rate, revolution, success, period. Suppression impact, political movement, radicalism. So if I go for guaranteed liberties. Ooh, actually guaranteed liberties seems quite good because it gives you lots of loyalists. Um, and it gives you loyalists from standard of living increases, which is something I'm working on right now. So let's do that. Uh, we would need to go to like either protected speech or right of assembly. So censorship is not great. Right of assembly is a step up. Let's go for protected speech. Speech is protected. Speech, speech will be, be protected in Japan. You could say or do whatever you want. I do like though that like the careful manipulation of the political system that we did in Japan like for the first like 50 years has led now to the point where I basically can do whatever I like like with the country politically. So we're still a little bit infamous but it is starting to bleed away which I'm very happy about. We're missing a little bit of coffee production. Let's go ahead and do that. Although coffee and tea are kind of like similar goods so they will kind of like compete for the same demand. That's something worth worth thinking about. I think though having a diversity of goods actually makes your people happier. I don't know why I think that, but that seems like instinctively like correct. Um, so silk is definitely something we want to get to work on. Each silk plantation is 20 and we're at a deficit of 300. So we can probably build like two rounds of silk plantations uh, to deal with that need. But I'm starting to get to the point now where like all of my market like goods are becoming like pretty equalized in price. So I don't know how I'm going to start increasing the quality of life of people. I guess lowering taxes. Yeah, well, Minus 100k if I lower taxes. Maybe we'll have a little think about that one. <laughs> We're officially the 10th biggest GDP per capita in the world at nearly five pounds per person. That's actually massive. That's insane. Let's take a look at our population here. So the average peasant is now impoverished, but now laborers are middling, machinists are middling. Machinists should be doing better than that, I feel like. Yeah, they should be secure, but it looks like some of them are having trouble getting their goods and wages met. Um, the intelligentsia is doing okay. Servicemen are doing okay. Farmers are doing great. Engineers are doing amazing. Shopkeepers are doing well. The aristocrats and the capitalists are doing quite well. Aristocrats have fallen out of favor. The capitalists are the true kings right now. Um, so revolutionary hejaz offering us an obligation. Let me have a look at this diplomatic play. So revolutionary hejaz is looking to annex. Hmm. I could get an obligation with hejaz, which would allow me to maybe bring them into my market, make them a vassal. Do I want to participate in this war? Could be a fun use of my military. Sure, I'll support you. Let's mobilize a couple of armies. Oh, doing that crashed the game. Okay, I guess I will. I guess I just won't accept that next time. <laughs> Ooh, here's an interesting one. We could finally have demand for oil. This would massively reduce the cost of groceries in my country too. It would massively increase the demand for fish and oil, which I'm honestly okay with because that'll give me an excuse to build up my whaling and um, fishing industries, which have honestly been suffering a little bit. So let's go ahead and just start slamming out those whaling and fishing industries everywhere that it's possible. So that should be a significant increase, but now groceries should be cheaper. That should actually be a huge boost in our GDP. I'm sure there's other factories that we could change. Let's see, Revolution Brewing. The Buddhist monks and the landowners are super mad again. They want to preserve censorship. God, they would take a lot of troops. Although this is only 200 troops. Their radicalism is only at plus 50, so we should be fine. Oh, I guess we're kind of... Uh, a little bit light on convoys. Why is that? What's going on with our convoys? Ah, so we just we just genuinely need a lot more ports. Well, let's go ahead and build up some ports. 
This is nice. We now have 25% more technology spread and guaranteed liberties. That's actually a huge tech swing for us because our technology spread was actually kind of crippled for the majority of the game. Um, so that's quite nice. What do we want to go for next? Ooh, my authority is a little bit low. So I'm going to have to continue to cut consumption taxes. These are the only thing that I really have going now in terms of authority. I think it would be really, really fun to do like a maximum authority run where you just make like the most authoritarian country in the world. Um, because authority is a resource that you get to play around with. But like there's a trade-off for, for losing authority, right? With protected speech, we no longer get authority. Even if protected sp speech is like a good political reform in terms of like the quality of life of my people. Can't restrict child labor. We can't increase the status of women. Maybe it would be good to do poor laws. What kind of political movements do we have in our country? Is there a way for me to see that? Let's build up our navy a little bit. I'm going to fully build uh, four new fleets, four new flotillas in uh, Kanto. Take a little while to build up, but they'll get done. The suffragists are marching. Uh, sure, successful protest, a good vintage. Ooh, 5% prestige or extra wine output. Hell yeah, let's do it. So there's a whole new fleet under construction here. Thankfully, um, this actually trains rather quickly. Thanks to Junicol, 160 training rate is like pretty reasonable considering I think we started with like 60. Yeah, 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 yeah. So quite a bit faster than usual. I think our infamy now has dipped low enough for me to consider starting to blow up some of these little miners here. Um, I could also attack Korea. They're in an alliance with Sardinia Piedmont or with Greece and uh, they have a defensive pact with Sardinia Piedmont but I do have claims. So what's the return state? Why is this 20 infamy? 60 infamy to make Korea my puppet. Oh my god. Oh dude check it out. We are the number one great power. Dude we did it. We are now the most prestigious country in the world. We have what the third biggest population. Pretty low on this thingy but the most GDP and the most prestige. Dude, we're we're rocking it. Oh, I'm really chuffed. I'm really happy about that. That's brilliant. Oh, there's whole other map modes. Hold on. <gasps> National GDP map list. Wait, where's this? Wait, where's this list button? Map list? How did I not know about this? Oh my god. Map list. This new mechanic that I, you've got political lens? Diplom a diplomatic map list? Okay, this is actually way handier than I thought. God, there's a huge amount of wars and stuff going on in Europe. Should I get involved? Nah, let's just stay out of it for now. We got, we got bigger fish to fry over here in the east. I officially have the biggest military in the world. Based. Biggest navy too. And I think my navy is strongest. Yeah, I got a navy that like dwarfs. Whoa, Austria's navy is insane right now. Austria, what are you doing? <laughs> Why do you have such a huge uh, navy, Austria? What is going on? You have a look here. Yeah, they've just like maxed out their naval bases across all of Austria. That's insane. Oh shit, the UK is inv invading Scandinavia. But there's also the British proletarian revolution. Revolutionary France. Oh god, Europe has exploded, dude. Prussia is still Prussia. They haven't even become Germany. Meanwhile, Giga Russia over here just chilling. Yeah, it looks like the, the world's having a few problems. Oh, we got the Me Mexican aristocratic revolt. A lot of battles going on here. You know, maybe the world's too busy for people to notice that I invaded Korea. Maybe the world's too busy. Let's do it. Let's take control of Korea. And let's just like, let's just start declaring interests all over Europe so we can start being like, oh yeah, oh yeah, you guys are... Oh yeah, you guys are like coming against me. Let me just take a little treaty port from you. I'll just, I'll take a little treaty port. A little treaty port. Oh, communist Philippines is, is, is popping out here. Maybe I can yoink them. You want to revoke my claims? Okay. It'd be nice to get some more reparations from the Piedmontians and from the Greeks. I don't think I can take treaty ports from them though. Oh wait, yes I can. Oh, China came into the battle. Oh baby. Oh, that's gonna make my life so much easier now. Let me go ahead and check out the militaries of Greece. Uh, so Greece has a very, very small military. It's line infantry with siege artillery. Okay, siege artillery is respectable. You have skirmish infantry with shrapnel artillery. So you're at least equal to me, but you also have medical aid. I think I did actually end up implementing. Yeah, I have first aid. So a little bit better recovery rate. Not amazing, all things considered, but a little bit better. Let's start having a little think about our battle lines, um, what things we want to take. I'd like to take some stuff off China. Um, let's see, we could take a treaty port from China. Now, treaty ports are a unique thing. So you take a coastal state in a single province uh, for the purpose of opening trade with that country. A treaty port permits the owner to bypass tariffs and embargoes when trading with any market in the same state region. Treaty ports that come under a hostile occupation do not convey their benefits. This would allow me to trade with China without having to deal with tariffs. Um, that could be quite handy. Plus, it would also be a, a, a great way to take a tiny chunk of land because treaty ports in China, they have like a million people in them if you take them from the right province. Um, if we go ahead and say, if we were to take a treaty port in Guangdong, 
the population here is 16 million um so yeah any of these like chinese coastal provinces that i could take treaty ports in would be uh like a very very cost efficient population increase let's have a look here let's see i've got 100 diplomatic maneuvers let's just start taking treaty ports i think i'm going to take a treaty port in guangdong here nay what if i took one in beijing yeah if i took one in beijing this would be this is in line with the battle lines and it would open up potential further invasions of china so i would like to take a treaty port in beijing god how fun would it be to take a treaty port in sardinia piedmont let's take a treaty port in sardinia let's do it <laughs> let's do it um what about greece let's make greece a dominion like dominion is 15 versus puppeting is 15. maybe we've asked for a lot i definitely want war reparations from china though because they have like such a huge economy that that would just fuel me. In fact, I think there might actually be a strategy as Japan where you just attack China on cooldown and demand war reparations. What's this revolution about? Okay, you guys are mad about censorship. Um, let's start to build more barracks. So we'll fill up all of the Japanese mainland with soldiers. So we'll join the front line and let's start mobilizing. I have a lot of generals. I'd like to fire some of them because they're all kind of like whatever. Uh, we have 151 battalions in reserve. What are you commanding? You're commanding 130. Why are you commanding 130? Because you're very popular. So we're going to mobilize you. You're going to be on the main Chinese front. Uh, how about you? What are you? You're cruel. You're a defender. So I'm going to mobilize you and I'm going to promote you once. This will give you an extra little bit of troops. Uh, and we're going to put you on the front here with uh, China down south. And then I would like to do some naval invasions of China, actually. Possibly I'll navally invade Beijing, I'll navally inv invade Shandong. Like, I'll do a little bit of naval invasion around here. Um, so in order to do that, it would be good to promote you. You're fully promoted. Uh, how many battalions do I have in reserve? Enough. You're on the Sichuan front. Let's promote you a little. And then we'll promote this guy. So he's fully promoted. Uh, and then we'll do naval invasions with these two. We have our fleets. Good, 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 good. Uh, let's go ahead and recruit admirals. Japan HQ. Yeah, you got a whole bunch of cool stats. I'll take you. So we're going to be looking to take some treaty ports. We're going to be looking for war reparations. We're looking to puppet Joseon. Oh, I don't have a, anyone on the Korean front line. Actually, let me go ahead and grab you. Mobilize and put you on that front line. And then you, I'm going to mobilize. So I'm feeling pretty confident once my troops arrive. Our average, yeah, our average attack and defense is way higher than theirs, and we have a relatively equal amount of troops. And then we should see similar stats over here. Our attack and defense should be a decent amount better. Yep, we have really, really high attack and defense compared to theirs. Uh, and then over here, when you arrive, we're a little bit outnumbered. But when the Japanese troops get here to, to advance the front line, that should make things a lot more equal. So they have a slight advantage just due to sheer numbers, but that shouldn't be a problem long term. Yeah, it's just a countdown to extinction. Here comes the big war, the Giga War that we, we've, been, we've been waiting on. All right, two arms. Let's immediately grab this guy. Your job is to do a naval invasion in Beijing with... Where are you? You're standing by in Japan. Kaganori Kujo, get ready to invade. Then my other fleets. There's a whole lot of naval convoys that we can do raiding on. But I want you to raid here, and I want you to raid... Yeah, that should be fine. One raider set to here should be fine. They're really, really high class ships, so they shouldn't have any issues. Let's start watching the battles unfold. So 23 Japanese divisions going up against 70... Sorry, 22 Japanese divisions going up against 77 Chinese divisions. Our kill rate is insane. We're shredding them. You could see that's the... That's the weekly tick of manpower restoration. They're getting a pretty big tick, but I feel like we're closing the gap here. Like, they just cannot kill me fast enough. The sheer quantity of troops being lost here is insane. We do have trench works now, um, but unfortunately I can't switch during war because that would be a bad move. So I'm going to focus on military production. I'll get the bolt action rifle and then the automatic machine guns. So I won't be able to switch our troop doctrine for this war, but the next war we definitely will be able to. Now it looks like we're losing, but look how quickly we're closing that gap. 20,000 dead sorry twenty thousand wounded eight thousand dead good god yeah look at the gap it's closing oh i love to see that the kill rate our recovery rate is actually kind of similar we're taking more casualties though yeah i think we're going to win this battle they've they're almost out of fighting men first step in the war complete how about down here how's the battle going this looks much much better yeah we're attacking much more effectively down south uh we're navally invading beijing and they are not being able to defend it this is amazing all right we just need to push through push through perfect the naval invasion is happening now the one downside is i'm pretty sure if we get pushed off here that's really really bad for us but uh they're gonna have a they're gonna have to pull troops from all different front lines lowering their effectiveness on those front lines so that's just all big big good news for us so apparently one of my guys got kicked off the front line with korea that's okay 
We'll figure that out. Um, Korea had a revolution. <laughs> middle middle of the war. Enemy controls 100% of their war goals? What the hell? Oh, because they control Korea. That's so dumb. Did this front line get split, I wonder? It did. That's so dumb that my war exhaustion is going down immediately from turn one of the war because they occupy their war goals. That's incredibly silly. Even though I'm completely smashing them in every category. Yeah, that, that definitely needs to be looked at, in my opinion. That's a little silly. Let's organize a naval invasion of, of Korea then before that becomes a problem. So we're learning how the war mechanics work a little bit better. Let's do a naval invasion here. He's traveling to Japan, so we'll get that underway. Yeah, because my war exhaustion now is like way too low. And I'm not going to get that war support back. That's really, really annoying. It's okay. I, I think I now that I know that, I know I have to like push my war goal a little bit earlier. I thought I could just deal with China and I would have time. There should be a little bit of a grace period here to not go for the war goal. But it's fine. We'll, we'll, we'll get it. Yep invaded without any issue now i need to babysit this because they have a tendency to like try to leave after they achieve their goals it's like nope you need to stay uh so korea has been smashed we're making very very small gains down here and um, but they are good gains so we're spending a lot of money on goods for military buildings we should probably build a few arms factories Let's see a single arms factory produces 25 small arms i have a deficit of a few so let's just go one, two, three arms factories. That should cover us. And then uh, one, two, three munitions factories. The good news is this Korea is almost capitulating. Um, although I'm not sure how this works when you have like a revolutionary Korea at the same time. A little bit awkward that, that you can have a revolution while you're at war with somebody, which makes things kind of odd. Especially because I'm going to be puppeting them. Does that mean I inherit their revolution? A lot of open questions here, actually, when it comes to game mechanics. Because this is, these are just situations no one's ever been in. Because the game isn't out yet, right? I've never seen anyone be in this situation. Uh, I think we need to raise taxes because we're burning cash too quickly. Sorry guys, uh, wartime taxes are being increased. So Korea have surrendered. I now puppet them. So I'm not at war with revolutionary Korea. Let's go ahead and make sure that we... I need to improve relations with my vassal. I want to bankroll them ideally so they can fight this war more effectively. But they should be in my market now, which should allow them to actually supply their armies more effectively. Although they will be going through a v adjustment period, it seems. So how is the support in Qing, China? Let me see here. So they're at plus 19. Um, they're 4.9% occupied. We control 40% of our war goals. Um, it should be higher than that, I think. We'll take massive casualties here as we occupy them. But my hope is they will surrender in the near future. Got a lot of battalions in reserve. Let me go ahead and grab this guy and start promoting him. We've got a huge Ukrainian migration. Interesting. People really love this little island over here, mostly because it's a colonial region. Um, we may want to think about incorporating it soon. I think we'll build it up a little bit more. There's tons of peasants we can make use of in these livestock plantations. The war down here in the south is a lot more grindy. I'm tempted to actually pull one of these divisions down here and put them down here as well. We could use the extra troops because things are just very slow and grindy. And maybe if we could get more troops on the front line, it would open things up. Um, just the sheer number of Chinese troops coming at us. Although we are completely like obliterating them because of our technological advantage. Again, our GDP is going to stagnate due to the war, but that's part of life. I need this war to get I need this war over and done with soon actually. I'm in omega debt. Okay, our war support is ticking down rather slowly. Theirs is ticking down really really quickly. I think we're to push for total victory here. I think we can get a total victory. It'll just take us time because we're completely slaughtering the south now. Now that we have two divisions on this, um, the advancement is quite slow. We're taking like one region at a time. But the slow and methodical occupation, um, I think, is is just going to be, you know, leaving them with no recourse. Plus, I really need these war reparations from China to pay for this war. <laughs> so I kind of can't back out. <laughs> I've got it stuck. Uh, I, I need to go deeper into debt to get out of debt. It's kind of a crazy concept. You could definitely see the effect that a war has on your economy, like just how stalled my economy gets when I'm at war. Spending half a million on military buildings. I need to bring that price down. The big problem is just how expensive things are right now. Um, yeah, I need to bring all this stuff down. Just big time. So the arms industries are being spun up. That's good. Oh, oh, oh. We have four star war goals. Huge. Diplomatic pacts. We got a treaty port in northern China. This one tiny little treaty port has 240k population. Tons of arable land. And it also acts as a potential staging ground to invade. So let's deal. Greece is having a revolution. What if we white peace right now? Would it matter? See if we can do some naval invasions real quick. Okay, I have some naval invasion, invasions firing now. So I'd like to just get out of this war so I could... Yeah, I'd like to just get out of this war, to be honest with you. Joseon is taking back their territory. They are my pupat. They are now in my market. My prestige and power grows. So the invasions are dropping in a few days. Um, that's going to be exciting. Looks like there's a little bit of a naval battle going on here, but my navy is way, way stronger. Um, way high tech. 
and way bigger. Oh, we weren't able to land on Italy proper. Okay. What about Greece? Oh, we managed to land on Greece. Mm, wiser offense. So uh, na insufficient naval invasion support. So let's set the terms to white peace and then just white peace them out. I think that's totally reasonable so we can get this economy back under control. I think it's time we focused a little bit on our production techs. In particular, I want to get nitrogen fixation. So let's finish out our tier three techs. We'll get like threshing machines, vulcanization, and we'll start focusing on industrialization because we just spent a lot of our potential infamy cap right now. We're super notorious so people are giga angry. So we'll let that bleed off for a little while. We need to bring down the price of guns, but I think the way that we do that is we go to our arms industries and we switch to bolt action rifles this will cost this will start using oil but more importantly it'll make the price of guns real cheap yeah now guns are super cheap in my country very happy about that let's get a couple extra munitions plants to cover whatever deficit i have there um, and then i need shipyards can i switch around my shipyards to something more productive I have extensive military building. All right, so the only way to deal with this is to build more shipyards. I get 25 ironclads per level. I'm using 324. So I need another eight shipyards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that should bring down the cost of my military goods quite a bit. And we can start restoring the issue that we're having. Oh, but yeah, I would call that a super successful war. We managed to puppet Korea. And theoretically in the future, we'll be able to annex them if we so choose. I don't know if we need to annex them. It's good to have puppets. We've managed to take Manchuria. We took Korea. We took a treaty port in Tianjin near Beijing. So we can actually trade with China without any cost. Like if I have a bunch of goods, like, hey, China. Oh, China has an embargo against me. So maybe we should try to enforce free trade on China next time. Um, but like in th theoretically, we could do this. But more importantly, um, this is a naval invasion without having to do a naval invasion, right? We have, we can land troops on the Chinese mainland without having to, uh, you know, actually do a naval invasion. But I'm going to call that the end of the episode. I think we've made really, really great strides forward. I love you all very much, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.